Hi there, Mr. Sutton here with the BC Calculus Chapter 7 Quiz 3 Extra Practice Solutions on Convergence Part 1. For this problem, trying to figure out if this converges, I go through my list of tests that I might try here. Um, first there's the nth term test, but this limit as n approaches infinity is going to be zero. And let's see, it's not geometric, it's not alternating, it's not a p-series, and a comparison test isn't going to work so well on this either. It's going to return kind of ambiguous results. Ratio test is also kind of a bust because we don't have exponentials or factorials. Um, so we're going to try the integral test on this. This looks like something I might be able to integrate, maybe if I use a little substitution. First, let me prove that I can use the integral test. So this is a function that's going to be, at least if we plug in numbers 3 or greater, this is going to be a function that's continuous, that's positive, and that's going to be decreasing as we go to infinity. Um, so therefore, and this is again for n greater than or equal to 3, um, so therefore let's try and set up an integral with this and see what the integral is doing. So I've got an integral from 3 to infinity of all this stuff, and I'm going to go immediately to my limit form for that because that's an improper integral. So I have limit as b approaches infinity of integral from 3 to b, 6 n ln of n times dn, and now I'm going to have to use a little substitution here because I have this ln. If I take the derivative of that, it'll give me an n that I can cancel this other n out with. There's really no other way to integrate this one. So let me let my u value then be ln of n. So du is going to be 1 over n dn. So then dn itself, if I isolate that, that's going to be n du. And I have to do that so that I can replace the dn with a du. Okay. We also need limits of integration. If my n value is 3, then that means my u value is ln of 3. And if I have an n value of b, then I can write u equals ln of b. Plugging all that back in, we have limit as b approaches infinity of ln of 3 to ln of b for the uh, limits of integration. And then I'm going to have, let's see here, we're going to have n times u down here. And this is going to be 6 times... Uh, n du upstairs. So now I can cancel out these n's, leaving me with just 6 over u, which if I wanted to I can write as uh, 6 to the negative 1, but there's really no need either way. Because when I take the antiderivative of this, this is just going to be 6 times the, abs or times the ln of the absolute value of u, evaluated from ln of 3 to ln of b. Still have all this limit stuff hanging around. And now to evaluate this, let me uh, take a 6 out of all this. And then inside, I'm going to have ln of absolute value of ln of b minus ln of absolute value of ln of 3. Although ln of 3 comes out to a, a positive number, so I don't really need the absolute value on that. But whatever, I'll leave it on there. It's not hurting anything. Okay, so now I have to actually uh, use infinity here. Take the limit as b approaches infinity. So as b approaches infinity, the ln of b approaches infinity and as that approaches infinity, this other outside ln is also approaching infinity. So this whole thing is going to infinity. This term here is kind of insignificant. Since my limit of my integral diverges to infinity, that means the original series also diverges by the integral test. To find the divergence or convergence of this one, I mean, you could try the nth term test, but honestly, I'm not even sure what the limit of this is going to be without digging a little deeper. Um, so instead of doing that, let's do the ratio test, because this has all sorts of factorials and exponentials, and ratio test was kind of born to deal with those sorts of issues. So I'm going to take the limit of the absolute value of the n plus 1th term of this over the nth term. So I've got a huge fraction. In the numerator, I've got n plus 4 over, uh, and a factorial there, over 3 factorial, n plus 1 factorial, 3 to the n plus 1. So all that jazz. And let me put an absolute value around that. There we go. And now down below, we're just going to have the nth term, which is just all of this stuff, literally cut and pasted down there. All right, time to same change flip this thing to get a fraction that's a little bit easier to simplify. So in the numerator, I've got n plus 4 factorial, and this 3 factorial, n factorial, 3 to the n, all of that upstairs. Downstairs, I have all this 3 factorial, n plus 1 factorial, 3 to the n plus 1, and also an n plus 3 factorial. Um, so a whole bunch of stuff to deal with here. So these three factorials just outright cancel out, so that's nice. 
And then let's see here, we have an n factorial versus an n plus one factorial. That's gonna reduce to leave me with just n plus one downstairs. Three to the n over three to the n plus one, that leaves me with a three upstairs if I subtract those exponents. And n plus four factorial over n plus three factorial, well, that cancels out everything except an n plus four in the numerator. So upstairs then, the only thing left actually is n plus four. Downstairs, we said three was gone. All that's left is this n plus one here. Uh, there's a three also here from this. Everything else is gone though. So three and n plus one. So that's kind of tidy how that all worked out. Now as n approaches infinity, the plus four and the plus one here are insignificant and we can ignore them. So we really just have n over three n, which we can reduce to one third. Now here's where we actually apply the ratio test. Since the nth ratio here is less than one, that means this series is going to be converging by the ratio test. On this problem, I notice that I have two terms both being raised to the nth power. So immediately I'm just gonna rewrite this as a single exponent. So negative three fifths to the n. And at this point I really notice this is a geometric series. So we have a absolute value of our common ratio of, neg of, of positive three fifths. Since that is less than one, I can immediately say that this converges by the geometric series test. On this problem, trying to figure out if it converges or not, I notice that I have a single radical term down here. Now, if I were to rewrite this, I could rewrite it with an exponent as n to the seven over four power. So this actually turns out to be a p-series, and we can very quickly verify its convergence with the p-series test. So I have a p-value based on the exponent down here of seven-fourths. Since that's greater than one, that means that this is going to converge by the p-series test. On this problem, I notice that I have a single radical term in the denominator with a one up top. Um, so this seems like it's gonna be a p-series kind of problem. So I am gonna use the p-series test on this. Uh, this is a p-series with a value of, if we rewrite this with an exponent, nine over 11. Since that's less than or equal to one, that means this will diverge by the p-series test. To figure out the convergence on this problem, as always, we start with the nth term test, taking the limit as n approaches infinity of all this. And we usually do this mentally. Um, I'm gonna write it out though because it, it's eventually gonna work out well for us. So as n approaches infinity, we can forget about this plus one. So we really just have three to the n minus one over three to the n. And that's going to reduce, if you subtract the exponents, you get three to the negative one or just simply one third. Now, since this does not equal zero, that means this is actually going to diverge by the nth term test. For this problem, I notice that I have an alternating series. Um, so let me think about what's happening as n approaches infinity for this. Well, if you look at these functions here, we have an exponential in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator. We know exponential growth outpaces polynomial growth. So this one, as n approaches infinity, is actually going to go to plus or minus infinity which is not equal to zero, which means this thing is going to diverge by the nth term test. For this problem, we want the radius of convergence for this series. So I know I'm gonna need either geometric series test or ratio test. I'm gonna have to set up an absolute value of something and set it less than one. On this one, I notice this is a geometric series and the absolute value of the common ratio is just eight X plus one. So I'm gonna let that be less than one. And now to get the radius of convergence, I have to have this in a form where I have one x plus or minus something inside the absolute value. So to get that special form, I'm just gonna divide everything by eight. So that'll give me x plus one eighth in the absolute value, less than one eighth. And then the radius of convergence is just gonna be whatever's on the other side of the less than. Uh, so radius of convergence for this one is just gonna be one eighth.